Okay, so the first topic that we're going to talk about in this advanced Google class is Google Plus. Google Plus is Google's um, social network. So let's do this. Go ahead and open up a web browser. We've got all the popular ones right here. Open any one you'd like. Just to keep it all in the family, I'm going to open Google Chrome because we're going to be talking about Google a lot. I'm going to open Google Chrome, but you can go Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, whatever you'd like. And let's do this. Let's, um, up on the address bar, let's go to google.com. You've probably been on Google several times. Um, Google is such an integral part of the web experience nowadays. It's the biggest search engine. It's the biggest phone manufacturer. Did you know that? That Google owns the Android operating system. So if you've got an Android phone, it comes from Google. Google owns a lot of things. If you check Maps, that's probably Google Maps. Uh, if you've got email, you're probably using Gmail. Google is a very big company that has a lot of endeavors. And one of their endeavors is social media. When you're a business and you're trying to get found, very few people nowadays break out the phone book and look you up. Um, you probably still get the phone book and you then probably put it in the recycle bin right away. No one really uses the phone book like they used to. We're searching for what we want on a web browser, laptop, desktop, mobile device. Nowadays, our mobile devices, our phones are so smart, you can ask it something, where is a good taco shop? And it will then give me results of local taco shops with star ratings and all of that, probably powered by Google. There's others, of course, being Yahoo, AOL, Search, etc., but Google is the big one. So we're going to be focusing on aspects, advanced aspects of Google in the, in the ultimate goal of getting traffic uh, getting traffic to our website, or our Amazon store, or our Etsy shop, or our Spreadshirt, or whatever it is you're trying to do online. Maybe you're a nonprofit organization. You're trying to collect donations. No one knows you exist. Maybe you're a great cause. No one knows you exist because you don't have traffic. Well, we'll be talking about tactics for building traffic uh, via Google's social network. Here on Google Search, I'm just going to search for um, comic shops. I'm starting to type comic shops, and it's possibly suggesting comic shops in San Diego, comic shops online, comic shops nearby. I'm going to ignore the suggestions. I'm just going to type comic shops. And what will pop up, in my case, there's going to be an ad. I'm going to ignore the ad. I see a map, points on a map, I see results, and um, as Google keeps evolving, <coughs> as Google search keeps evolving, we see various refinements to the search results, such as this really nice call out. Of a, of a map and like these featured stores it seems. You might say, how much did they pay to be right here front and center compared to everyone else? Most likely they paid nothing. They paid nothing to be featured like this. The trick is, which is what we will do very soon, they have a Google listing set up, a Google Plus page set up, a business page for their business from Google, which is free. So that's what we're going to be talking about as our first topic. I've got a business on Adams Avenue, let's say, or maybe I'm a plumber that visits people, but I want to show up like this nice call out with a star rating and all of that. Uh, I wanted to show directions to my shop easily because these, these results over here might be great results but I'm already paying attention to the ones that stand out here. If I go to more places, same thing, all of these comic shops pop up. 
I hover over one of them, then it appears in the map, and I say, oh, we're not so far from that one. If you need driving directions, four and a half stars, that's pretty good, four and a half stars, etc. Visit their website. This online presence right here is what we will create in a moment, because obviously this is great for, for traffic, for getting you, getting you found when someone searches, getting you traffic to your website or your real business or whatever, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, selling comic books, uh, selling uh, your, you know, your speaking engagements, selling houses, or whatever you're trying to do online, um, gaining donations for your nonprofit, etc. If you have a Google Plus page, that gives you the leg up against your competition. And so, you'll be able to have reviews and such. The big name in reviews is what? What do people give you reviews on online? Oftentimes Yelp. Yes, Yelp is the, the, the more famous one. But Google has a version of Yelp reviews too. It's Google's own Yelp reviews. Um, if you create a Google Plus page like we're about to do, uh, you will have the ability for people to, to rate you and comment on your site, which of course is good and bad. Good if they give you a good review, not so good if they don't give you a good review. But even bad reviews are useful in that it's an opportunity to show that you're a good business. Uh, my company deals with various clients that get reviews and such, and sometimes a bad one comes through, especially for restaurants. People love to complain about restaurants. And so the thing about a bad review is someone might have said, I had a terrible time at that restaurant, and I found a fly in my soup. One star. Well, that's still an opportunity for us as the business uh, in, in, instead of the client of the client for us to answer that negative comment with we're sorry about that we had a bad uh, lunch hour we apologize let us make it better come again and give us a second try there's an art and a science to dealing with bad reviews and we're not going to talk about it too much in this class but my advice for you would be always be positive in responding to bad reviews and don't bribe don't say uh, here's 10 percent off come again here's a free meal we're sorry you know don't bribe them to to improve your your rating because you do want to reply to the negative comments and you want to reply publicly so that other people see this business is trying trying to make it good and it's not going to look so good if you say you know uh, your next meal is on us come back you know you gave away a free meal that's a bribe so in order to have this ability to answer these comments and such, that again is tied to the Google Plus business page that we're about to create. So what we'll do is we'll um, We'll go to the address plus.google.com. Plus.google.com. If you go to plus.google.com, you may get a pop up that says featured collections. Just click let's go. But basically, Google Plus is Google's social network. It's like Facebook, or Twitter, or Pinterest, or whatever other social network you know about or use. It's going to be useful for you as a business because, again, it could drive traffic to your website. It could help you rank higher on the search engine results uh, compared to your competitor. It'll help you create an online presence that will help you get found more. If your competitor is not using social media, and you are, if your competitor has been around 10 years and you've been around 8 years, but you're active online, 
your results could appear higher than your competitors, even if they had a head start, if you're active on social media. And so we're going to use Google Plus to help us get active and get, get found. If you take my social media class, we go into detail there also about using Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and a bunch of social networks. But in this class here, we're focusing on Google Plus. Um, what's always a bit complicated when, when I teach anything about social networks is that we need to create an account, uh, but the screen, my screen, might look a little different than yours. And I've tried to create a brand new account every time I come and teach a class, but eventually I've run out of email addresses and I've run out of um, confirmation text messages and all of that, so I'm not going to be able to show you step by step to create the account. I'm going to show you in general, and then we're going to take a moment for you to try it, and then I'll help you if you fall behind. And here's what we need to do. Uh, at the top, uh, well, I guess on the left, do you see a button that says Join Google Plus? Click on Join Google Plus. And here it's going to ask you, if you've got a Gmail account, you already have an, an entry into creating a Google Plus page. If you don't have a Gmail account, you have the ability at the bottom, create an account. The question always comes up, am I going to use my personal Gmail account or my business Gmail account? Either or will work, and this is one of the confusing things about Google Plus that I hope they, they fix. I've been using it for years, and this is always confusing to teach. You can use personal or business Gmail account. But going this route will automatically create a personal Google Plus account. Even if you choose your business Gmail address, at this screen here, it's going to create a personal Gmail, a uh, personal Google Plus. So after we create the personal one, then we can create the business one. Um, that's the slightly confusing part. So I would use the personal Gmail account. That would be fine. I would use the business one. That's fine. But when we get past this screen, we're then going to create the actual Google Plus business page. And from this screen here, it's going to create a personal profile. So let's take a moment to do that. Log in with a Gmail account or create an account. If you create an account, it'll ask you to verify your phone number and such. You want to do that. So let's take one or two or so minutes for you to either log in or create the account. If you have any snags, call me over. Let's um, take a moment. Um, to do that. Yes. So you um, recommend to uh, use the already uh, existing uh, my Gmail for example, you know, if I have the account, I have Gmail account, so maybe it's okay to go ahead and use it. It's okay to use the personal one. That's what I do. I have my personal Gmail account, which I have my personal Google Plus to put my, my personal stuff, but then through that account, I then can create or manage business pages. So I have my personal one, but then I have that connected to you know five business pages. But my personal stuff will not show up on those business pages. They're separate. So that's why it's okay for you to use a personal Gmail here, even if you're working on a business. It's not going to connect it. I'm kind of concerned about the you know, privacy thing, you know, but I guess if you want to give up the, the name and the everything, you know, information, I think anything can be. You can make it up, you can put it honestly. Um, it's pretty secure. Google is one of the biggest companies for security and such, so your information being stolen and such from outside parties is not a big concern. It could happen, but it's not a big concern. But yes, it is a big company and we might value our privacy and such, and, and I know I do, uh, but still, in order to use it, it's sort of like, well, it's yes or no. Either you share that information to use the system or not. Well, I guess make it up. So it's up to you to decide if you want to do it at, at, at all or not, you know, if you want to be a little safer, you can make up the information um, and then learn the concept and then if you see that it feel, you feel that it's safe, then later you can put your real information. Okay. Let's take a moment, either log in or create the account.
um, about the Google Plus. Um, I created an account yesterday and I changed the name. Do I have to create a whole new page or? No, actually there is a button that we can go to edit your profile and you'll be able to change any aspect of the, oh. of the account. So uh, I can show you where that is in a moment. But yes, there is a way to, to change what you've already created. Yes. Um, I just said uh, this question. Um, I had a, a they, they wanted to verify by um, phone or by text. Text it. So, I mean, that, is there a way of bypassing that? I don't think so anymore. You used to be able to, but the reason for that phone verification is anyone can create any account uh, on Google+, Twitter, or whatever. And so adding a phone number to verify you is one step to possibly prevent fraud. So it's not that they're going to be capturing your phone number and calling you to complain, like Yelp. Uh, this is... I've never had anyone be excessively called by, by Google uh, yeah. at all, so it should be okay. Or even return the podcast. <laughs> Actually, I just was on tech support with Google yesterday and they solved my problem. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. I'll be talking about how to do that. <laughs> I think I heard the, uh, the phone thing is uh, for the NSA. NSA um, uh, maybe, but that's the thing. It, you, you have to if, if you don't want to use any of this, then you, then you don't use it. If you want to use it, you have to apply that information. And, and I don't know if those aspects of things are true, and they could be, they could not be. I don't know. But they only know what kind of underwear you have. Possible. They have cameras everywhere. Yeah. There's one right here. Just to confirm, was everyone able to log in? Do you maybe see some sort of screen that looks like mine, which is collections? Maybe you don't see the same thing that I see, but you see a bunch of boxes, perhaps. Collections. This aspect, yes, the collections, it looks, yeah. looks a little bit different. Um, when it was around, I'm just trying to remember, I don't know. <laughs> That's just a remastered screen of the Google Plus, so here's what you can do. I think uh, let's go ahead and take manage the function now.
So what I what I checked on your particular computer was just to make sure you've got the latest version of Google Plus. Um, you notice on mine, this is the old style. It's got these icons that look different than yours, so I need to change mine. Basically, what I did was Google is changing the look of their of their um, of their design. See it's telling me try the new Google so you might have gotten a pop-up that says you know uh, welcome to Google uh, get the new design so I'm switching to the new design and see now the new design looks like this instead of it having those colorful icons now they're subdued um, so we just uh, uh, just switched your design to make sure that it's the new design okay what's the difference between the plus and then just the Google well, the big difference, the Google Plus is the whole social network. This is where you can, as we'll see, we're going to post pictures or links or chat and that sort of thing. That's Google Plus, the social network. And the regular Google is just search. It's just or the, or the email, right? Or email. Yeah, so Google Plus is their social network with many features, and regular Google is Google search or, or email. So it's like, oh yeah, you said it was Facebook. Facebook it's like Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have this account. I logged in with my personal account, and at the very top right corner it shows my, my picture because I've set it up with my picture. Uh, yours probably just has a circle with your initial on it, but the point is that's my personal uh, Google Plus account where I can connect with friends and family, share funny pictures, whatever. It's my personal one. The goal, however, though, is not to use the Google Plus personal profile. The goal is to use the business page. So if at the very top right corner you click on your icon, mine says, there's my name, and it says Google Plus or Profile. Profile is the keyword that tells me this is personal. If yours says profile, it's personal. Probably everyone says personal or profile because we logged in that way, and that's okay. Notice below, then I have Google Plus page. Google Plus page, Google Plus page. These are business pages or brand pages. So I have my personal and then I can click to manage this business or that business. And they're separate. My name, Victor, will not appear on these accounts unless I choose that. So it will not tie me, the person, to these business pages. That's why I said earlier, it's okay if you log in with your personal Gmail or business, either or. Because even if you had chosen to log in with a business Gmail, it'll probably still say Google Plus profile. Even if you've chosen your business email, it'll still be a profile unless you do what we're about to do. And the reason you want a page is because that will let you create a listing on the map. It will let you create that listing where people can give you star ratings. It will let you do reviews, that's not going to happen on a profile. It's not designed for that. So on mine, I have all of these businesses that I can manage, and then mine says all your Google Plus pages. Probably for yours, it doesn't have this yet. 
Yes. How many of you see a link there that says all your Google Plus pages? Raise your hand. Mine doesn't say, unless my business does, it doesn't say Google Plus page underneath it. What does it say? It just says like beauty artist with like name of my companies, but it doesn't say Google Plus page underneath the company. It's pretty odd. It should say Google Plus because those other accounts then might not be pages. They might have been set up as personal. So we will we'll check it in a moment. But that is the big idea there. There is a difference. If it says profile, it's personal. I think if it says nothing, it's also personal. It has to say page in order for it to make sure that it's a page. What I'm getting at is I've created several of several of these pages for clients or I've been given access by a client to edit the page and that's why on minus is all your Google Plus pages the catch 22 here the thing that's ironic is when you first create an account you might not have this and this is the main thing I want to do I want to create pages I don't want to use the the personal uh, profile uh, I don't care about that. That's what that's what Facebook is for for me or Twitter. I want the business pages. And when I taught this last time, um, there was we I figured this out that because Google has changed their interface, they've kind of hidden things here and there for regular people. So I'm going to show you up here what to do. You'll only need to do this once, and it's annoying, but you'll only need to do this once, and then you'll have the ability, like I do, to be able to switch between businesses and create new businesses. Here's how I had to do it. I'm still on the screen here of collections. Doesn't matter where you are really, but I'm still under collections. At the very bottom, click help. There's a help button. It takes you welcome to Google Plus Help Center. And then at the top, search help. I'll start typing um, business page. I'll start typing it. It'll give me suggestions and hopefully you get a suggestion that says Google Plus Pages and Google My Business. Does everyone see that one? Click on that one if you see Google Plus Pages and Google My Business. This is going to explain what a Google Plus page is or Google My Business. There's a technical difference, but basically these are for a company or a brand or a nonprofit organization or actually whatever you want because notice in my examples over here, I'm managing a couple of restaurants, a couple of web design businesses, a comic shop, and then over here, I've got a Google Plus page for me as an instructor, as a personality, let's say. So you can create pages for anything. And the reason you want pages is because you will be able to do extra things that a regular profile cannot. So you wanted us to click on that Google Plus Pages, Google My Business? No, not yet. I'm still explaining oh, I'm that this that this is um, that's what this is explaining here. Well, when you clicked on help, you at the top you needed to click on then you needed to type uh, business page, and then the first result should be what what we're looking at. So then we get this screen here. Google Plus pages are now managed through the Google My Business dashboard. With Google My Business, you can still post. In addition, you'll be able to see insights, connect a page to your YouTube account, and host Hangouts, and such. What this is saying is the Google My Business link, this, this is a dashboard for you to manage the business version of your account. And if you put your mouse on it, don't click it, but if you put your mouse on it, you'll see at the bottom here the address is business.google.com. In any event, uh, that's what this screen is explaining. The help system is actually pretty useful. Um, and after we create the business page in a moment, the, the help system gets even better because there will be a button to call Google Tech Support. 
and they will answer you. Last night, I called them with one of my clients. We were at his store. We called them at like 11.30 last night, and, and, they, and they answered. You know, they called us back like one minute later, and we got the problem fixed. You don't get that kind of tech support with a regular business, uh, with a regular personal profile, but you do with a business page. So let's go ahead and click on Google My Business. That's going to go over to business.google.com. And then this might be different for people, so let me look over your shoulder. Mine is going to show all of the businesses that I'm connected to, so let me just look what yours looks like. Okay. 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 Okay, one minute, just bring that up there. Let's ask them to sign in. No, that's fine. Oh, I'm just going to add one. So, yeah, that's fine with that. So, again, my business, my Google My Business screen looks like this because I manage, as part of my company, the the business pages of various clients. They're listed here. I can then switch to edit these businesses. Uh, a couple of you simply have one business, so it just shows it. I have multiple ones, so it says, which one would you like to edit? And you guys over here don't have any of them yet set up. So um, I think there's a blue button right in the middle that says, what does it say? Get on business. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and click that one. So when you click, if you have that screen to get on Google, you'll get a map. That map then is for you to claim, let me show it like this, you'll get a map. Because if you've got a business on Main Street, you want to claim that business um, so we can create a page for it. So that then we can deal with those reviews, star ratings, we can add photos to our location, we can fix any of the things that are broken. If you already have a business, we can search for it here and find it. Now that doesn't apply to everyone, right? I, I have a business, let's say, but I don't have a location. I still want to create a business page, but I don't have a location. So if you do have a location, you're going to search for it and select it, and that's going to be a process. If you don't have a location, you do it like this. At the top left corner, click the three-line menu, and there's a section for adding a location and a section for a brand page. You want to add a brand page, and look at that, contact support. That's there also, and if you follow those steps there, you will get a phone number. Uh, a way for Google to actually call you with a real person to answer your problem. It works. I just did it last night at midnight. But for us, um, if you don't have a location, you're going to be adding a brand page. Let's say I have a business that has a location in San Diego and Los Angeles. Well, that's what would make sense to do locations, wouldn't it? Probably for most of us at the moment, then, we're going to select Add a Brand Page. You can add as many brand pages as you want. So click on Add a Brand Page. And so here we get Create Your Google Plus Page. It asks for a page name, website, and type of website. Page name is the name of my business. Let's say I've got Victor's Tech Reviews. Let's say I've got a business uh, about doing tech reviews and I want to build a page for it. Um, so I'm typing that name. This name that I'm typing here though will not be the name of the address of my account. Uh, if you've got a Facebook account, for example, it might be called facebook.com slash victorstechreviews. That's the address, the URL. 
if I've got Twitter, I probably have twitter.com slash Victor's Tech Reviews. I want for Google, google.com slash Victor's Tech Reviews. I want the name of my company as, as an address. This is not that. This is to add a name to your page, but not the address yet. That's on another screen. Yes? So, for SEO purposes, I have a business name. Would, if I put San Diego, does, would that matter as far as searching? Not really necessary, because that this is only one piece of the puzzle to get found. The rest of the pieces of the puzzle are the, is the content that you publish. So you don't need the keyword San Diego here because you're going to be publishing pictures or text or links or whatever and there is where you're going to be using those keywords and such. So you could put San Diego, let's say I have a San Diego location and a Los Angeles location. Perhaps then it would make sense to put San Diego. But I wouldn't put San Diego here simply thinking about it as a search term. This is the name of your business as it is. And if you have a website, you want to add the website also. If you don't have a website, don't add it. But the purpose of adding a website is to drive traffic back to your website. As you get followers and likes and such on Google+, and you probably will get traffic to your website. Because on my website is where I'm going to sell advertising, where I'm going to sell my book, where I'm going to sell subscriptions. I can't do any of that on a social network at the moment. I can't sell my book directly from a tweet. I can't sell it directly from Pinterest. I have to sell it from my Etsy or my Amazon or my eBay or my website where I've installed WordPress and have a shopping cart. So that's still the reason you're going to have a website. People sometimes ask me, if I'm, if I'm an, a superstar on Instagram and Twitter and such, do I need a website? It depends on the business, but usually, yes, you still need it because you might be amazing on Instagram, but you can't sell anything on Instagram yet. Only big companies can, you know, Macy's and Walmart and Best Buy and such. We're not that level. We're not going to have access to sell products on these social networks. Eventually they'll let us, as they work out the kinks and you know figure out how to make it profitable for them on us. But at the moment, really, if we're going to sell something, goods and services, products, real or virtual, you need it on your website or your Etsy or eBay, whatever. But that's why you still want to link back to your shop from your social media. If you don't have one, don't add it. But you can get a free website with some limitations over on WordPress.com. We could have victor.wordpress.com. That'll give me a free website using WordPress. It has some limitations, but if you've never used WordPress before, WordPress.com is the free training wheels to see how WordPress works. Later on, then, I would go over to Bluehost or GoDaddy or HostMonster or whatever and buy an account there so that I can have victor.com instead of victor.wordpress.com. The, um, the I think it's smart enough that you can just put the name like that. You should be fine. You don't need the www and, and all of that, the yeah. HTTP. What's that? Oh, okay. So it might be smart enough. Uh, you should understand it, whatever web address you put there. You don't have a lot of options here, but then you've got type of page, product, brand, entertainment, community, other. Just select any. I'm going to go with uh, this is a brand. There's a page terms. This is the thing that no one reads, but everyone is used to on everything tech, right? So if you do want to read, what are the page terms? Basically, they're about how can you use the service. You can't, you know, put abusive content, violate copyrights. 
um, impersonate another account. Oh, this is interesting. Names. You may choose any name of your page so long it complies with the content policies, which I'm sure no profanity and such. Once you have selected a page name, you may change it up to three times in a calendar year. Once your page has a significant number of followers, we no longer allow a name change. Interesting. So they don't tell you what significant is. So yeah, no one reads these. Everyone's, everyone agrees. Once in a while, you should read the terms like that. I didn't know that. So I'm going to agree that to that and click Create. It's going to want to verify with a phone number or text. And again, this is to help prevent fraudulent activity and spam and so forth. They're not going to call you and harass you to buy new services. So what we'll do at this point is, actually we've been talking a little while, we're going to take a break just to make sure everyone is on the same page. If you're creating a new one like me, you want to make sure you verify. It's asking me to verify, so I'm going to do that. If you ran into any other trouble, call me over. I'll help you out. I just want to make sure we've all got a business page. Then I'll go into the nuances of the page, how to use it and such. And then we'll go on. It's about 1.42. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll come back at 1.52 and keep learning more.